tools I'm going to use. Um, if you've not soldered before, it's a good idea to get yourself some um, regular soldering flux paste. Um, a good quality solder, a sort of rosin core solder, little damp sponge to keep the tip of your soldering iron clean, um, and I'm going to be using the burns o um, which is a butane uh, soldering iron, which I find very handy and you're not going to fight with a cable while you're working. Um, absolute minimum wattage really for doing soldering is sort of 40 for this application. Um, so get the best quality soldering iron you can justify um, and just make sure that it's really hot when, when we start work. In with the FXR kit you'll see there are a number of wires that are supplied. Um, there's two black ones which are obviously negative, there's two red ones and a blue one. Um, blue is often used for connecting uh, the motor but you can choose between either blue or red. What we need to do first, you'll see on here this one that has been supplied, we just need to remove um, a small section even 4 mil of the wire and then just do a process what's called tinning and you can see this is shiny and it's got solder on and that's what we actually need to do. So I'll go ahead now, I'll just remove all the outer sheath and then we'll show you the tinning process. The thing we do need to install is in the battery terminals there's a capacitor that comes with the kit. Um, dark side denotes the minus and we need to just lay that on to where the battery terminals it's quite easy to to understand this one um, it's B plus and minus and M plus and minus, M for motor and B for battery. Okay, I'll prep up the wires, get the capacitor ready and come back to show you um, soldering. So to tin our wires, just cover the end of the wire with a bit of flux. Now we're going to add a ball of solder to the end of the soldering iron. And then just touch our cable on. That'll then take up the solder. So now we've got to add the capacitor to the speed controller and you can see I've just bent the pins so that it fits inside these battery posts and again just remember which way round the positive and negatives go there's a little um, dark patch on the negative side and it goes on the battery posts. So to do this we need to just add a bit of flux as it's a small area you'll probably find um, a toothpick or something like that is easier. What you need to just make sure is that you don't have any going between the two posts because you don't want the solder to run from one to the other. Now what we're going to do is on the end of our soldering iron is just add a ball of solder and we'll then apply that to the posts. So a nice big ball of solder What I did do to make this slightly easier is I just put a bit of um, tape on the speed controller and I just mount it on a piece of wood and then at least it's not wandering around. I need to go ahead now and just tin the last two posts before we add the wires so I'll go ahead and do that. When it comes to attaching the wires you can see I've done the blue one which is the motor negative. Um, we need to heat up both the posts and the wires and the two bits of solder on the components that we've tinned will then join and as soon as you've got them in place and you're happy, remove the torch and it'll um, go firm. So if we just do that, this will warm the post up, then it'll warm the wire. The two should then bond. Just remove your soldering iron and just check, and that's nice and firm. Just want to point out now before you finish using your iron, just clean off the end. You can then turn it off and you just want to apply a little bit of solder to each side and that will just keep the tip in good condition. With all the four wires on now we just want to you know, tidy up the insulation. So using our burns o -matic, we can use it as a, a hot air gun. I'm going to slide some pieces of heat shrink, just plastic that will shrink almost half its size once heated. Slide those over each of the posts. And 
then we'll just warm that and that'll keep them in place. Just be careful obviously not to get it too hot. You don't want to melt any of the components. It's very important now just to make sure that you've put some real thought into where your electronics are going to go in your truck. Um, before I started soldering wires onto the posts of the ESC, I'd had a look of where I wanted it to be so that you can see they're coming straight off the posts and this negative will then go straight to the negative on the battery. However, you could have come off either side or the back, um, so do have a really good thing. Each ESC is different. Um, and everybody's got their, their own tastes of, for routing. And you can see then this one will go up here to the positive on the motor. We just need to cut these short, trim back the 4mm of insulation, tin them, and also then tin the posts on the motor. So with the tabs on the motor, just add some flux. Add a dab of solder. So to attach the negative wire to the motor, let's rest them on, and we're just going to push on with a soldering iron. There we go. So now just to put the heat shrink on. We'll shrink those down, and that's the motor connected. For the battery connector, I'm using the Traxxas connectors, and you can see that on the casing, they're actually marked with a plus and minus. Um, so it's a good idea, because they are obviously handed, um, to lay all of your pieces out so they're in order. On the little gold pins that we're going to be soldering to, You can see there is a line here, it's a soldering line, and we mustn't have any wire or solder going any further than that. You can see I've trimmed the wires back with the 4mm showing and I've tinned them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place each wire onto that connector and then with the soldering iron we're going to push down till the solder melts, take the soldering iron off and it should then stick to the um, terminal. Push with the soldering iron. You can see I've added some heat shrink just to tidy up the connections. We now need to mount them in the housing and just make sure that we get our positives and negatives around the right way. Just push them in as far as they'll go. And if you turn the connector over, we're going to just put a flat screwdriver on the back of those terminals and push them home until they click. There's rest against there. And click in. You know when you're right because this gap at the top will be about a millimeter. For the final connection of the receiver it's always much easier to fix all the components where they're going to be and then worry about the wiring and making it neat and tidy. Um, so just use some of the um, double-sided tape that comes with the kit and you'll see that I fixed the speed controller onto the front of the receiver box and the on off switch for the receiver I've just put on the side so there's going to be easy access to turn the truck on and off. Fix the receiver inside and then just make sure that you've got the wires going through the um, opening um, with the aerial coming out and then just to hold them in place just um, zip a cable tie around there and that'll just keep them tight while we connect everything up. Right, so the two things we've got here to connect are the um, servo and the speed controller. So for the servo it goes in channel 1 and on this particular receiver the negative black wire points to the outside and then the speed controller goes in channel 2. With that done we just then need to tidy up the wires. You can either just 
coil them inside the receiver box or if you want a really neat job you can use a cable tie just to tidy them away once they're in just put the top of the receiver box on and you remember in the earlier videos I showed you just to drop that front end down and it'll sit down and then there's two screws that secure this one on each side and you just wind those down and that'll close the box tight this will just help you know, avoid splashes getting on the electronics um, while you're out on the trail okay now ready to mount the um, battery tray up another thing just to tidy up is the aerial wire you'll find in the kit there's an aerial tube if you just thread the wire up that tube there's an amounting on the side of the receiver box and that's just a, a push fit and that'll come up through the body so onto the battery just get this cage orientated that way around so the longer part going to the front and you see there are some recesses that the Valkyrie straps will sit in um, if you're building the CF100 kit and um, this mounts the other way around and it goes over the the rear of the truck rather than the front but this is the honcho so it's going on the front um, and as it's the honcho we need to drop the two screws through those front set of holes pop on the two plastic spacers These then drop onto the front two holes. And then just tighten those down. Now we need to put the straps onto the battery plate. we need to do is thread them so that the textured side is facing down and you need to get this orientated so the odd hole is to the top left and you just go down and up and then just central them it's the same textured side down go down and up and then just centre it now to mount this, the first thing we do is put the screw through the front hole and on the chassis there's then another little spacer that goes in at the front and this threads down through through that spacer down into the cross member on the chassis when it does tighten up you'll see there's some small little pins that will come up into the aluminium plate just tighten that down and on the front side likewise there are some pins that will come up and then there is a small very small screw that goes in that front end mounting a battery on here is very simple just lay the battery on the aluminium tray and then simply do up the Valkyrie straps and that will hold it in place and then you can just plug in your connection to your speed controller to remove it it's simply the reverse undo your Valkyrie straps and the battery will come away ok we're now onto the part of really painting the body um, so I'll show you some steps on you know cutting out the body and masking it uh, with the window masks, painting it and really getting it ready for assembling the rear roll cage and flatbed and along with the front bumper ok thanks for watching please comment and subscribe if you want any further advice or tips on soldering please get in touch um, it's been quite hard to get you know all the detail in for you uh, see you on the next video